This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. Shout out to Go Money, though. Shout out to Go Money. If, if it wasn't for Go Money, you know we wouldn't be here right now. No, they've they've tried for us still, guys. No, they tried for. Listen, th- get the app. Get the app. Get the yeah, app. It's a digital s- bank. And when you get the app, send me some money. Don't send the yeah, bank yeah, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send me yeah. some money. Yeah, so. I'll drop my account number in the comment yeah. section. <laughs> <laughs> But well, we got another money man in the studio. You know what I'm saying? All we like to talk about is that moolah. Yeah. And do you know why I like this guy? What? Because he has one of the most similar interests to me. Wait, 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 wait. What is going on? Similarity. <laughs> yes. Okay. What when is I it? first met this guy, I think we talked nonstop for hours. And what did we talk about? Cars. Cars. Oh, you look on the whippers. Yes, man. The whip whip. He... Like, I like cars, you know. I, I will go in. All right, no, we're about to go in real quick. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge car guy. Yeah. Shout out to the Beamer gang. You see? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not be you're Merc guy. Okay, yeah. yeah, you're Merc guy. See, yes. we, as we know, we know who we are. Yeah. We know. Now nah, you're not a real driver. Man. You're a stunter. <laughs> real drivers in the building. Take the Beamer. We know ourselves. Us Merc people. But. So um, yeah, introduce yourself. <laughs> Uh, hi guys. Um, so my name is Joshua Abraham. I am, you know, the white collar mechanic. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. So you you're you're a huge uh, you're a huge car guy. Is it like that's your thing? You always into cars. I've, I've, been... I've loved cars for as long as I can remember. I've I've watched Top Gear for as long as I can remember. But real Top Gear, not not, not what the they new have. one. No, I mean, no, no offense to you know, Paris. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, the real. Well, top the black gear. brother in there. Yeah. Don't make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that diversity <laughs> shit. <No. laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> give me Jeremy Clarkson. Mm-hmm. Give yeah. me James May. Give mm-hmm. me Richard Hammond. Oh, okay. That's yeah. my jam. Yeah. Oh, okay. So 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 look right. What do you think about the episode where Richard? Uh, I, think, I think it's Richard. I was driving the Rimac and he crashed the Rimac. That's crazy, right? Crazy, honestly. I just kept thinking, would these guys have to buy this car? <laughs> Today? BBC. And how much? Do you know the budget for Top Gear? But there's insurance, though. Yeah, insurance. Yeah, yeah. They have, insurance. But they have a huge budget, man. They can really huge anything. budget. For me, it's Car Wow. I love Car Wow. Oh, my God. Matt. Home and International. Matt? Row Cars. Oh, man. Yeah, when we yeah. start getting into those YouTube channels, yeah. I know you're a car guy when you start watching yeah, all yeah. them. Yeah. Man is tr- Trotter House or whatever. Yeah, it's America. You know <laughs> <laughs> So I used to do more of Doug DeMuro before okay. I met Throttle Thro- 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 House. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry Doug. Yeah, yeah, he, Doug goes in. Yeah, he yeah. goes into the tiniest detail. Mm. But after watching Throttle House, it just seemed kind of boring. Mm. So I, I just kind of I switched. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. There, there's, there's, there's a couple of interesting, interesting guys. I mean, even Nigeria, like there's guys... There's, People are doing some car stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get in, but they haven't got the good cars in there yet. They're still like yeah. raving over like CLAs and stuff like that. Oh, I know no, you guys far are behind. We're in genius. No, we, 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 don't, we don't rave we about don't CLAs. We don't graduate to run the Maybach, baby. Come on, no. We don't do that here. <laughs> so, wait, what's the car of the moment? Right at this time of the day, right mm. now, what's the, what's the car of the moment? My mind personally, or like generally, generally, yeah. generally, like where you suck at this car is blowing up, blowing the charts mm. off, off the charts. Toyota Camry, really? no, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a Toyota Camry, it's either a Lexus GX 460 or mm. LX 570. Oh, yes. it's, it's a Nigerian car, like, bro, it's like you get know, get over those two cars, man. Nigeria, no, I know why they do why? that because actually, um, it's 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 not a G Wagon, but it's a statement on the outside. Yeah. But the inside is luxurious and comfortable. Yeah, but and engineering wise, I think you know Lexuses are are quite good. The Japanese get the engineering right. They're more reliable than your Beamers, for yeah, example. Yeah, but it's boring, man. I think it's got yeah. that boring. I yeah. mean, when I'm talking, when I'm talking, when I'm talking when I'm cars with the moment, I'm talking about like Aston Martin DBX seven oh seven seven oh seven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about the new Range Rover Velitio, or whatever it's called. No, uh, <laughs> Lamborghini, Lamborghini, Lamborghini. 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 Yeah. Revelto, Revelto, yes. We are not seeing that here. <laughs> We're talking about in the next five years. Revelto, no, come on. No, no, no but shout out to Lexus, the LC five hundred. I rate that. Mm. I rate yeah, that. Yeah. That's that's, that's on my nice. that's on my list. That's on my list. <laughs> yeah, there's one. I'm, there's one at Motown in VI. You know, I know, I know, I know. I've, I've been seeing a couple. It's not too expensive. Just about fifty nine. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that's yeah, all right. That's that's right. Sixty mil. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. not for sixty. You know, when this podcast not... blows, you lot, you lot gave me, <laughs> <laughs> you gave me LC five hundred real quick. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So tell us more about about your your activities and you know I mean, in the car space or other things. What are you What are you doing? Um. So I, I'm basically the guy you call when you want to take care of anything. 
regarding your car from maintenance, repairs, escorts, hey. upgrades. Hey. I, I told you one I needed. Yeah, I told you. Literally, I, yeah. I literally met him, and we just we just were you stuck together. Yeah. So literally. So hey. the thing is, my clients, my clients <laughs> are so comfortable. Let me tell you my problem. Wait, wait, wait. I need to tell you my problem. Okay. First. What's up? When I came to Nigeria, first of all, I've always driven BMWs. Mm. Okay. So I bought. No, no, I bought. <laughs> this is crazy. Which, which one did you buy? Wait, I bought three series. First of all, which one? Three, three, five, three, two, eight. Uh, no, no, no. Three. Two eight. Three two eight. Yeah. That's reliable. Four cylinder. Yeah. N fifty two engine. Yeah. N fifty two engine. Nice drive. <laughs> You know me, I know my things, right? So, yeah. I'm okay. so I was thinking, you know what? This is cool, you know me, vibing, whatever, whatever. And then, um, tires. I always kept getting flat, maybe because I drive and mm. they go to Nigeria, right? Yeah. But I had to get some flat tires. Yeah. Oh, we had a bad episode one time. <laughs> I had to yeah. get flat tires. Then I bought this, um, the Cayenne. For sure, Cayenne. Yeah. And I was like, this is good. But VW should be reliable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. I was on a Porsche Cayenne this Spaghetti? week. The thing didn't turn on. Really? That's auto. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the thing oh, didn't oh. turn on. Oh, that was dead. Then, then I got X5 and then that also was trying X5. to give X5. Uh, trying to give you, me you clearly do, don't like holding money in your I'm pocket. I'm telling you. Because ah, you can't buy it. Come on. I sold everything. Go to Cayenne. <laughs> And it's, said, it's nice, though, and it's, it's nice, nice, yeah. it's nice. But I just, I just said, listen, you, you love it, it costs me more money giving them than it was worth the car. Yeah. So if you have a squire now, one thing you should do, yeah, yeah don't call This is this is legal. Go right? ahead, go ahead. Tint your windows. Yeah, it tinted. Siren lights in front. Mm-hmm. I ain't done that yet, but yep. I think that's gonna be good. Cover your plate number, or you can get plates that are worthy of that status car. Mm. I won't talk much now. Hit me up after. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna just send the car to you now. Yeah. I, I'll be worried about who's gonna be taking care of my. And now so, I just found this guy. The With this get up and that car, nobody's going to stop you. Mm. All doors are going to open. Trust me. Mm. But yeah, after the show. We'll yeah, talk yeah. More. Let's talk. Let's talk. Oh, be you know, saying I move credit in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. So anything, anything car related, you're the guy. Anything like my clients are so comfortable now. They don't even have to go to filling stations. Mm. I deliver fuel. Wow. One wow. number. Put your number. Put your number. Put your number right now. Right now. Just put your number. So my number is 0806 401 5226. One more time. 0806 401 5226. Nah, I, I need so that, a, that's how comfortable my clients are. I'm about to save that number. This is like a home. And, how, and how many years have you been in the game so far? Not long, actually. Um, I, why I'd say I'm a white collar mechanic is because I used to be a consultant up until the end of 2021. Wow. Yeah. So I started my career in learning and development. I was a learning and development specialist. Um, I did three months in tech. So like Mm -hmm. I'm a light tech bro. Um, Mm -hmm. There was a startup that hired me for organizational structure and learning structure for the, should I say, edutech Mm. company they were launching at the time. And when they were trying to get official cars, the founder is my friend. I've known him, you know, from way back. He goes, ah, cars, just give give Joshua, you know. It's his thing, he'll get it for you, sort you out. And then I got them, like, what, five cars in a week? Save, like, five to six million, because I know where to find the good deal. I've been following cars for the longest time. Hmm. I got him a 2012 Audi A8. It was one of two in Lagos at Hmm. the time. It was beautiful. And I remember going to pick up the car from a shop, because I had one or two things. You know, if you buy a foreign user, a Nigerian used car, you have to, like, you know, touch it up a a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm seeing the guys at the workshop, they're having so much fun testing the cars. That's when I started, like, you know, thinking about BMs. I, I drove a 740 mm. and uh, it you did felt things. It, it, it felt the power. took me on a journey. <laughs> <laughs> a full size sedan should not be that fast, fast but that's yeah. a story for another day. And I just thought, wow, <laughs> this could actually be me. So one day I was talking to the person I was seeing, you know, a Yoruba woman. Mm-hmm. And us. she's like, nobody does roadside assistance in Nigeria. Like, mm. if you get stuck, there's nobody you, you have to call, call your mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, your mechanic will tell you, ah, sorry, you, Oga, I did a lot of now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oga, I know they shop. And I'm thinking, this is not a bad idea. And I'm thinking, you know what? Why not just have like a package that has roadside assistance, everything routine mm. when it comes to maintenance for your car? Mm. And that was like the first version, mm. right? It was registered under a name called Motopadi. Mm-hmm. It was meant to be your car's best friend. Mm. So one phone call, one text message. Everything is sorted out. So I was modeling the business after AAA. Because mm. mm. AAA has, I mean, when it comes to retail assistance, they are the best, hands mm. down, yes. globally. Mm. But I realized, you know, the hard way that copy and paste doesn't work. Doesn't work. Especially Nigeria in this African different. context. 
The first thing I learned was Nigerians don't do maintenance, they do repair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's very simple. They don't do that is maintenance. Bible, right? <laughs> that literally. literally. <laughs> Nobody buy so, the after sale service. <laughs> yeah, like I got, I'll get it, guys. The car will come to me, and I'm seeing your dashboard like a Christmas tree. Hey. Come, and I'm like, you're telling me to save you. God, your ABS is bad. <laughs> First of all, your ABS speed sensor the, 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 is the ABS bad. Is just sensor, no problem. <laughs> and once you're like, ah, sir, you need to do this. Mm. Focus on this one. Focus on this one. one. <laughs> People are, people are suffering was, in this country. And then I had plans as low as 15,000 a month that covered, you know, your documents, renewal, your driver's license, mm-hmm. renewal, mm-hmm. your oil change, all of it. And it was meant to work at scale. But then I quickly realized that Nigerians really... Hmm. <laughs> they believe that the blood of Jesus covers everything. Um, mm. brave, That's brave. why a lot of people don't do insurance. They say, oh, insure your car for mm. X amount of money. Mm. Like, ah, why? So insurance what, in address so so what cheap, happens to the, the money? Yeah, it's cheap. So they ask you, what happens to the money if I don't use your service for the whole month? And I, go, I, I, I just got tired of, you know, just answering the question over and over again. Mm-hmm. And what I realized that there was a market that was willing to pay for the convenience of it. Mm-hmm. There was a market that values cars and they will do anything to maintain mm. these cars. So what I did after three months was to change the business model and target a new audience. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met, that's where this version called Midas was born. Wow. So the idea behind it is convenience. There are a lot of people who don't have the time or they rather just pay someone to take care of the problems. Dealing with technicians in this country, mm-hmm. is an extreme sport. If you've ever hired a tailor here, you'd understand what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. A lot of mechanics, they'll tell you, oh, oh, God, this thing is bad. What they won't tell you is that they are going to spoil three other things, so you pay them for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, facts. There are a lot of people who don't even know how to handle certain cars. A lot of my clients drive Range Rovers, mm. and they have suffered because they don't have technicians who understand, understand how to decode you know, the problem. Decode, the yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Even how the cars behave, mm. even the basic information, like one of the biggest problems for technicians right now and why people come to me is a lot of people don't take the time to do their research. Mm. For example, this Range Rover Vogue, the, oh, yeah, the old school. status symbol yeah, where yeah. people just, they, they people move from like a Land Cruiser, the next thing they're going in. Range like Rover, a Range Rover. Yeah. Yeah. Complex. What, and we buy a lot of used cars because, I mean, our exchange rate will not allow us to breathe. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when you buy, you know, an L45, the 2013 to, let's just say 2020, 2021 Range Rover Vogue, from 2013 to 2015, majority of them that are on these streets now, mm. even the ones that are upgraded to the light refresh of 2018, yeah. are between 2013 and 2015. The amount of recalls mm. on that car alone... For what? Is it no, the manufacturer recall. So very random things yeah. for 20, 2013. Airbag. They had like a la- no even airbag is, is as light. They had like a latch problem where as you are driving, your door will just open for no reason. Oh God! <laughs> wait, wait. I'm not joking. Fully open or just the thing just open? Fully open <laughs> on its own. It Don't had for saying. airbag. It had for crankshaft. It had for a particular suspension problem. The list is long. So by the time somebody is even buying a car, Mm. right? You're supposed to have a technician that would walk through everything on the car and make sure that you are getting a good car or you at least know what you're supposed to do to fix all the issues on the car. I have someone, unfortunately, a client, he came to me and said, oh, he just bought a Range Rover. It's showing a suspension fault on the dashboard. He said he spoke to someone and the person said he could drive it like that. Hmm. The error was suspension fault, <laughs> lean when cornering. They tell you that you can continue driving it and it means nothing. How? <laughs> Nigerian mechanics. <laughs> the implication, like, the thing is, it was just a very, very small issue that was caused because the car was parked for too long. Mm-hmm. That's the only mm-hmm. thing. Mm. Literally. So, because of small, small things like this, a lot of people buy these cars. They don't enjoy it because they don't, they don't know where to find the people who know how to fix it. Mm. And that's where my service comes in. Yes. So if you don't know how, you don't know where, right. mm-hmm. you don't have the time, or you'd rather just pay someone to do it while you focus on other things that will make your life more productive. You, you, you know one thing? I inherit all that stress. One thing I want to add to that is that, so, so 
like like I'm 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 really a huge car guy. Like it's not we a are, we, like we a really proper are. proper car guy, right? Okay. And I'm trying to get some really serious cars in this country. Okay. Right? Okay. But I'm always scared that if something goes wrong, somebody it's will just hard. mess it up, right? <laughs> yeah. So the there's a bit of intellectual knowledge required to fix cars that yes. mechanics don't have right now, or some of them don't have. Some of them right? don't. So for example, right, a car has a fault you read the codes you understand what's going on it's okay is it going to be a hardware change or you can flash something or whatever it is right yes. all those kind of processes some people will just look at a, a, a light come on they wouldn't even read the code they'll say oh god is this <laughs> hmm. right so i think what you're doing you're filling that gap of the intelligence that's a little bit required before yeah. you kind of do white collar mechanic yeah, yeah. white yeah. collar mechanic exactly. yeah. Do, do, do that do that stuff right so let me just ask you a question i, I personally want a tesla in nigeria okay right? And it's the only No, but for real though. So the only issue I see with a Tesla in Nigeria for me is just the kind of the I don't maybe I'm wrong, but other than the charging infrastructure and all that shit, but the suspension and, and the things under the car, right? Yeah. Because other parts don't really move that much, so it's, I'm not have to really worry about them. But do you think like it's advisable, it's possible for me to actually own a Tesla in Nigeria without like worrying about too much on repairs and stuff? Yes, it's possible. Okay, how would you say that will happen? In what scenario? So Tesla is they are one of the easiest to maintain. Mm. You know, there's no you're not worried about certain parts expiring after like ten or fifteen years because it, it's mostly electric components. Um the only thing that would kill a Tesla in this country hmm. just don't enter water. So if you mm. know that you if you live on the island, mm. Particularly some areas in Lekki, just leave the Tesla alone. <laughs> leave it alone. Leave it alone. What if I get the model X? I can't, I can't help you. Anyway, Sha, <laughs> buy it, drive it through water, call me if you need to fix it. <laughs> That's all I'll tell you. Um, second thing that a lot of people or people, a lot of people who have Teslas battle with is getting proper chargers. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know who can actually install a charger and install it the mm. right way. Mm. There are a lot of really, really phony companies. I was in one of my partner workshops one time, and there was this Chinese company. Somebody had brought a tester to them to charge because they felt like the charger wasn't working. Mm. So they did everything, gave the guy a huge bill, and they couldn't solve the problem. So they came down to us. And the owner of the workshop went down there and just told them simply, your charger has a problem. You don't have a good enough charger. Mm. And they just kept thinking, well, what do these black people know? We're mm. Chinese, we're superior. Mm. They argued, argued. At the end of the day, they ended up bringing the car back to the workshop. And guess what? We built them a hefty fee just to charge it. Good. Because you cannot, you, can, you, cannot, you can't be condescending when you don't know what the problem exactly. is. Exactly. So Tesla, Teslas don't have many issues. Maybe just like light electrical fault mm. here and there. So if you have the right technician, then you can enjoy your Tesla here yeah, more than... in and give it to this yeah. guy. If any, any problem. Yeah, it I'll could be as reliable as can a Can I enjoy Toyota. my Rolls Royce ghost in Nigeria? <laughs> if, you have, if you have the money to... Yeah, yeah, you can actually. You can. You can enjoy your Rolls Royce. <laughs> so the are, they, are they like Rolls Royce specialist uh, guys in Nigeria? There are, actually. There are. With the potholes and situation in the yes, country. Yes, of, of course, yeah. So, I mean, when, when all these cars are made, they don't necessarily test Rolls Royces on, you know, tarmacs where mm-hmm. everything is fine. They make sure that the they call the platform or the chassis the architect of luxury, mm. Mm. right? So they test it on different surfaces to make sure that no matter what kind of terrain you encounter, mm-hmm. you are comfortable and you are insulated from all the poor people outside. Yeah, <laughs> more or less. The peasants. So okay. with, with, yeah, with the portals, you, I mean, you can survive. It uses you know air suspension, so. I want to it's talk about, um, you know, say no to Nigerian men, guys. That's, <laughs> it's never going to change, okay? Say no. Mm. So I want to talk about Nigerian guys for a bit, you know? Yeah. Okay. I want to talk about... handsome brother in the studio, well, obviously. You. Well, yeah, he cute. He cute. Yeah, but that's not you. where I was thank going. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bone to pick with Nigerian men. Hmm. Okay, especially because I'm a car babe, so I notice. There's two issues I have with Nigerian men when it comes to cars. Okay. Number one, yeah, you get yourself a nice car, you know, Exterior wise, the interior is as old as me. And then, mm. if you don't do that, you'll now get yourself an old car and then be paying them to upgrade it to like it's, a twenty. It's a, his fault because he keeps telling people to upgrade their cars. So I really want to, like, mm. you know, PSA, you know, a service announcement. Please, what is <laughs> the, this upgrade? So, culture. Nigerian men, <laughs> <laughs> I 
why are you upgrading your cars? Put your money where it works, like where it can afford. So just, I want to know, why do you think this is happening in this country? Hmm. Okay, so the thing is, there are two sides to the coin. Number one is, if you cannot afford a brand new car or like a newer model, if you can afford to upgrade yours to fit the ones closest to it, Personally, I don't see anything wrong with that because I'm 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 all about mods. Even though personally, I I, I would go for subtle mods as opposed to mm. moving in closer to the more recent years. I'm a vintage kind of guy. Okay. I'll take an E92 over whatever. Smart guy. Ooh. Yeah. M392. Oh, no. oh my god. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Honestly, I almost bought one. <laughs> yeah. I, it said Nigerian use. I was even considering it. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> I can't help you. Yeah, so that's You're one very side. Silly. <laughs> yeah, so that's one side. The other side is there are some cars that buying a new one is actually a waste of money because mm. you get little to nothing. Mm. Take so this 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 um this GX four sixty, which is like the you know average Nigerian man. I have made it starter pack <laughs> car. It's everywhere <laughs> now. Honestly, I, I feel like we have a drinking game sometimes. Just look. Outside your balcony, How many can you count? anytime you see a GX four sixty, take your shots, <laughs> enjoy your life for that night. You you will get messed up. <laughs> so the thing is, GX four sixty, I think the generation that we're seeing started in two thousand and nine or ten, right? Mm. From that point, if you look at the interior, it has not changed. Did not change. Mm. Yeah. Up until two thousand and twenty one. Wow. I get it. I get it. Mm. Yeah. So what they did was like light refresher outside. They changed mm-hmm. the grill. They changed the lights, you yeah. changed the rear lights, added a few cosmetic things. But you see that interior? Yeah. The same. same damn thing. Mm. So why would you buy a car in 2011 and just because they changed the light and grill, you will spend 20 million extra buying a new one? Mm. Why? Mm. There are guys who care more about performance okay. than about aesthetics. I know a guy who bought two C63 AMGs. He bought a W205. That's the generation from 2015 till 2021. Yeah. And then he had a W204, which is 2008 to 2014. Okay. Right now, he drives a 204 more because Damn. it doesn't have a lot of those, you know, assisted systems. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to be a proper driver, driver if you yeah. want to control the speed and the performance. You know, it's a twin turbo V8, rear wheel drive. If you don't know how to drive it, you'll end up in the lagoon. <laughs> a lot of people... <laughs> Like cars, they like that edge to it. That's why yeah. people like old Lamborghinis, the, mm. the Countaches and the likes, the Murcielagos, Murcielago. the Porsche say. Carreras from, from back in 2003 because those cars are raw. They're driver's Driver cars. cars yeah. mm. You know, people like those. So if you're that kind of guy, why would you go for a new one? Really? No, I, but but what she was talking about specifically <coughs> is, the, is the guys who are stunting. On yes. the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not the, not oh, the, guys, guys, oh, the guys who are stunting. stunting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so my, I, I don't. I mean, I can't defend those guys. They put money in your pocket, basically. So no, no. So, so, that. so this is the thing. You no, know, Nigeria. Okay, I've never really like the car I'm driving right now. I probably will not drive that in the UK. How? It's a choir. Yeah. That's a big, <laughs> no, that's a no. Boy. You can't drive that in the UK. Yeah, but 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 this is this. This is a couple of reasons why. So when I came to Nigeria, I I would I bought a car that would I've driven in the UK, mm, right? Like yes. a three series BMW, blah, 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 yeah. right? So. Obviously, in the UK, those are like normal cars. that like Every young, okay person can drive it. No problem, right? But then again, in Nigeria, you don't get the same... Like, I'll get more respect in the bloody Sequoia yeah. <laughs> than the BMW 3 Series. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. there's, a lot, there's a lot of perception over here. Like, a yeah. lot of perception where... Even the gate men, the police. The gate men, the police. Yeah. So, so, sometimes, it's not because you really want that car. It's just because you don't have to have the stress to be Facts. telling somebody... Da, 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 or the, you understand? So, yeah. I kind of get the reason why some people will have to be doing those upgrades to the car because it's a lot of face value. It's Some people are just to just to get away from those face value situations. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. So, I mean, so the thing is, for, for, for those, for, I think what you're talking about is the respect or the clout that comes with certain cars. Mm. Yes. They're for government-issued cars. Yes. The Prados, Land mm. Cruisers, the LX570s, GX460s and the likes. For those ones, those are government-issued cars. So once you see a black one, mm. yes. it's tinted, it has lights to cover the plates, you just think, ah, government, government or some big boy connected to the government and then they give you that clout. However, upgrading it does you a disservice. Really? If you want to 
if you want to play in that space where you are seen as a government big Person, boy, yeah. upgrading it would do you a disservice. Mm, because you because gov- look like yeah, a, government issued cars are it's always stock. They're stock, yeah. What will speak for you is your plate number. When you see that FG, they know to leave these ones alone. Mm. When you see Navy, mm. leave them alone. So if you upgrade your car, people start to question, yeah, like, ah, this guy's guy new money. He new money, yeah. Maybe, maybe he stole yeah. it or something. When you see, like, no disrespect if you own a GLA, but I saw a GLA with government plates and I'm like... A GLA? Mercedes? I, I promise you. Oh, do they even drive those in Nigeria? GLA, Nigeria? the small yes. one. Yeah, the small one, GLAs, yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, they a lot do. of um, women, new money women drive it. A GLA. Yeah. Yes, anytime I see it, I feel like sending a strongly worded email to Mercedes because I don't know why the GLA exists. I'm telling you, the, en- the, the size road. is too big for, for the road. engine. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, don't, I don't get it, but I saw a GLA with presidency place and I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, you're lying. The wife said, ah, okay, Honestly. I need that place in my car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the thing. So for, for guys who upgrade cars, I mean... Personally, I don't I don't see anything wrong with it. Mm-hmm. If you simply cannot afford it, a lot of like Japanese cars are make they make make they make majority of the cars here. Yeah. And if there's not much difference between the upgrade and what you have, mm. there's mm. really no point. If we're being honest, That's, you made a good point. Yeah, you made a you made a good point. Say no to Nigerian men though, but you've uh, <laughs> you've made a good point. <laughs> no, no, but 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 okay. Let's say right now from from your experience, what kind of cars do you think? Ladies like Salewa would like go crazy for. Hmm. I would say between like a Lexus RX three fifty to a Mercedes C three hundred. Is that true? So basically, one <laughs> car is one I've had, and one car is what my dad's had. Oh, okay. Both of the yeah. two of those. So, so yeah, I'm familiar with both of those, but. You know me already. I've told you, JLE sixty three. Wait, wait. What's confusing me though? Because not the Maybach is different from the JLS. No, right? I told you. I'm still in my baby girl stage. So you I'm want still the GLS? Young. If I have a GLS now, it's ridiculous. When I have children, I know I have the GLS. But for now, the JLE sixty three S is a little, it's a cute thing, you know. Yeah. Mm. What's what's this proliferation of GLEs in Lagos? Where's that coming from? Yeah. Like, where did it even start? <laughs> I think. Mean, <laughs> God, They're like the mini G wagon, initially. <laughs> yeah, so I think Jelly started pouring in about 2017. Mm. It was like a, it was like a replacement to G wagon and ML. Ring. No, God forbid, ML really? is disgusting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Like, I, 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 I drove an ML. I've driven an ML a couple of times, and all I could think about was how boring is it? An ugly the experience. Yeah. Well, boring to drive as well. I've so never even boring. been in an ML. I've driven one before. It's Honestly, it's, so boring. Yeah. Like, it's so boring. Even the slightly refreshed GLE 350 that came out in 2016 mm. feels like a world of difference. That's mm. how boring it wow. is. Wow. Yeah. So God forbid. <laughs> oh, no, honestly. Um, so yeah, so what was, what was I saying? Sorry, I lost my train of thought with this ML thing. So disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Where did GLE came from? Like, yeah, GLE, yeah. So, yeah. like you said, every year there's a car that rains. Mm. 2016, it was G-Wagon. Like there were G-Wagons everywhere. Before mm-hmm. you turn left, right, G-Wagons everywhere. Really? Yes. Then slowly they all phased out and then the Range Rover Vogue 2013 was everywhere. Somehow all of them faded and then... It now came to the 2015 C Class and the 2015 2016 E350, right? Mm. The 212. And apparently, that be- it was like a lot of Yahoo boys that owned them. So yeah. people started shying away from all those cars. Yeah. So the next best thing, which was just coming into the country, was the GLE 450. And that's where the craze started. Okay. So you f- you find a lot of yeah, there were a lot of them coming into the country. So you think cars in Nigeria move with trends? Hundred percent. Yes. What was the trend 100%. now? Now what's the trend? The trend now, unfortunately, we're still stuck between. If you're like a daddy, African daddy. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a daddy, the first thing you get either like a Prado, Land Cruiser, or like the Lexus equivalent, mm. which is the GX, LX, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. If you're a baby boy, a lot of people buy this, you know, W205 C300, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is a horrible decision because it's the one of the worst used weakest cars engine to buy. Yeah. Honestly, that two liter four cylinder, yeah, so weak. disgusting. Mm-hmm. I don't like it at all. Right. Then if, if you want to go a bit higher, if you're a big boy, young guy, you get a Range Rover. But Range Rovers have terrible service history. Yeah. 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 Mm. 
I, I think he's saying that so that, so that they, they can call him more often. <laughs> yeah. the day. No, I'm not sure. I'm just saying this is what people do. Do yeah. Right. A Valar or what? They will still no. They buy. They buy a Vogue. A Vogue. Vogue. Not even they the buy Valar. a Vogue. So the thing is, the Valar is no. The Vogue is like a. It's like a sweet spot between. I want to say affordability, but it gives you rich man vibes on an average budget. Yes. So if yes. you want to get a range of a Vogue. A Nigerian used would run you anywhere between 20 to 28 million, okay. right? If you want to buy a Range Rover Sport, there was a Range Rover Sport 2016 like on sale for like 16 million naira. Mm. They see you and they think, ah, this guy has money. Mm. <laughs> when it's someone just... who bought a, what, 2019 Honda Accord spent more money, spend money than you. Yeah. You get what I mean, right? Mm. Your Sequoia sometimes will cost more than all these cars. Mm. Yeah. If you know how much people buy these cars, mm. if you see the deals people... Hmm, let me keep quiet. People are watching. <laughs> but there are deals everywhere. So you can look rich on a budget. Bundle, and that's yeah. what the Range Rover does mm. for you. It makes you look like you are in the 1%. Mm. So that's why a lot of people go for the But Range the fact Range that the value is so low, drops so low, doesn't that say something about the car itself? It does, but people don't... People don't, don't care. They don't care. They're not hearing it. All they see is the Range Rover big boy. Another thing I want to ask you is, I had someone close to me, and they were buying a vehicle and actually shipped it. You know, we've been talking about Nigerian news versus foreign news. Mm. So they shipped theirs from the US. Now, um, their husband had like access to the US system and he checked it and they found out that the mileage had been clocked back by a, you know. <laughs> oh, the like, fucking mileage it, thing. It was disgusting. Yeah. It was like over 50,000. Yeah, it was, it was, yes. it was absolutely what? mind-blowing. And so when we were discussing it at the table, they were like, they, they think that it wasn't actually done in Nigeria. They think it was even done from the US side. I just want to know, have you seen things like that happen? Oh, yes, I have. Um, unfortunately, it can be done from here as well. Mm. Right. I think another... Stolen vehicles. A lot of stolen vehicles come to Nigeria. I have a client who also drives a Range Rover, right? And I think... The technician he used to use made a very, very simple error. Mm. He puts in a battery without programming it, which sounds weird. Mm. For regular cars, you can just pull out your battery, mm. put it back. A lot of Range Rovers, if you do that, worst case scenario, you, you lose your memory functions, your seat functions, your, um, what do you call the shortcuts buttons? But you lose that as mm. well. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, your charging system shuts down. Yeah, you flash and it. if you're shutting, shutting, your charging system shuts down, your car is gone wow so that happened and there wasn't we couldn't access the vehicle because the battery was dead mm. okay so no problem they create fail safes there's like a physical key in the key fob we checked i tried and tried and tried nothing was going through so i called the technician I was like guys this is what i'm going through what do you prescribe and the guy goes to check if that's a dummy key i look at it and it's a dummy key both keys are dummy keys so it's either the owner was really really clumsy previous owner mm. or Stolen, stolen car. So up up until today, whenever we're working on that particular car, we cannot put the VIN on some certain platforms mm. because mm. as soon as exactly. put it in there, stolen. Yeah. Interpol will get it. And yes, th yeah. there are a lot of them. So they have we have the stolen vehicles. You have the ones where they move back the mileage because mm. one myth we have is cars with lower mileage will drive better. Yes, yeah. I would rather take a car with higher mileage mm. with a proper maintenance history. Mm. Over a car that has low mileage. And because bad if a car yeah. has low mileage, there are reasons why. Was it parked yeah. for a long time? Is it accidented? Mm. Is it stolen? Is there a latent fault just waiting for the next person mm. to pick it up? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. We don't think about things like that. Yeah. So because they think, ah, if it comes here with like over 100,000 miles, nobody's going to buy it. They dial it back. Mm. That's what they do. Car dealers, they would... A lot of them are accidented. A lot of cars are accidented. Yeah, yeah. And it could go from minor body work to Spider-Man hit it when he was fighting <laughs> some bad guy. And it was really messed up, right? There are cars that were caught in floods. Mm. So if you want to buy a car, make sure to look under for signs of rust and all of it. So Ooh. there are a couple of, you know, there are a lot, not even a couple, there are a lot of defective cars in mm. the market right now. There's, there are clients I have... I'm seeing 10,000 error messages. Why? Because there was front-end impact and the people who fixed it didn't bother to fix it properly enough. To so get, all yeah. the sensors in front are defective or blind and then you have issues. 
Nah, this car, you buy, just buy a car new, man, and just, and just bring it in. You can, you can find good cars if you know what you're looking you're for. I'm or just, if you go through now. Midas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go through Midas. You go just through Midas. I'm, I'm your you number one problems. brand ambassador, boy. No, yeah. no, no, that's crazy. So, so, yeah. so people are looking to buy new cars quickly. What are the top three things that they should look out for? That hmm. will just keep them at least on the safe side. Mm-hmm. Always run the VIN, number one. Always, right. always run your VIN number. Mm. So the VIN number is typically found on the windshield, the bottom left corner, driver's side. <coughs> run it, run the history. You can just, it's very, very simple. Just put in the number and Google search. You see it there. For some few cars, you have to go to different sites, but it's worth it. That's number one. Number two, go underneath, check for rust. Very, very important. Number three is more or less like a hole in one kind of thing. Check for any leak anywhere. Engine, gearbox, you know, power steering, if mm. you have that or it's electric, check for all of that. Those are the first three things that personally would check and then all the others follow. Mm. And brakes. <laughs> I was I wasn't I was driving in a Buja one time and there was a van. You know those old school one chance buses? Mm. The thing was coming close to it didn't want to stop. And it didn't stop. It hit you. Fam, we sp- we I had to step on it. By the time we asked them, Kilon Shale, I said, sorry, the brake is faulty. Yeah. Like I said, Nigerians don't understand maintenance. <laughs> so that's how okay. you just claimed my life. Because <laughs> of faulty brakes. And nah. The brake is faulty. Why are you driving the vehicle then? Why are you driving it if it's faulty? So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of madness going on. That's but crazy. I'm excited to see your journey, honestly. I, yeah. lo- I love an intellectual. And you're now intellectual with cars. So I, I think everybody's nah, going to be watching I, I'm you. I'm, I'm yeah. going to call it a number. But, but before we let you go, though, okay. last question. If you're the president of Nigeria, in relation to cars and road transport and stuff, what mm-hmm. would you do differently? Yikes, that is a tough question. Um, What would I do? So I think what I would do personally would be to give a platform to people who... More or less the car community in Nigeria. The car community, we have a... It's small, but it's very, very active. Right? So if you promote the car community in Nigeria, very soon it's get to a point where we start to produce some of these cars locally. Almost every, you know, civilized country has a car company that they are proud of. You know, I had people talking about how the prime minister, the British prime minister would use Jaguar. The, I mean... True. I mean, U.S. president uses Cadillac. Mm. Yeah. In Nigeria, we have Innocent, but and I Nord. mean, and Nord. Shout Nord. Nord. Yeah. I mean, if I'm the president, I, I would still want that S600. But <laughs> 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 I mean, it'd be nice to see Innocent, maybe Nord. Yeah, Nord. Do yeah. do things that are exciting, you know. Like mm. if you even if you look at this Russian brand Lada. Mm. Lada back in the day was this very yeah. Very now they really did some interesting stuff. I'm looking at what yeah. Lada is doing and I'm, I'm yeah. wondering why, how, why. Yeah, they did some really interesting <laughs> stuff Even the now, GACs, yeah. the Changjans, and the rest and yeah. the likes. The Geely, Geely is doing really well. Mm, Geely, yeah. yeah. In the Nigerian market They're now. They're here in VI, yeah, yeah. 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 And if you look at the tech, these are things that we can actually do as Nigerians. Innocent is very big in Ghana. Oh. For example, mm-hmm. yeah, most of his money comes from Ghana, not Nigeria. Oh, so if we create an ecosystem that actually favors the car industry, mm. then, you know, and hopefully in the next 10 years, we have cars that we can even export to other countries as well. Amen. Amen. Ah, that's good wow. advice. How can, how can we get to know you, man? Where your Instagram, socials? Let us know. Let us know. All right. So for now, my business is very exclusive. It's if you know, you know. Wow, this guy. Thank God, though. Thank God, we know. His clients yeah. are really looking after him. Boy. <laughs> it's literally if you know, you know. So I work. Most of my clients now are the, you know, founders in the fintech space. I have, I mean, um, my biggest clients are Piggy Vest. Wow. So I manage the cars for all the co-founders, Amazing. more or less. So, yeah. um, typically, it works with referrals. You know, someone calls, oh, I have a problem with my Range Rover or my Mercedes, mm-hmm. and they say, oh, talk to Midas. Right now, since I'm still new and I'm very, very particular about the people that I work with, since mm-hmm. I'm a proper car guy, I have a conversation more or less like an interview and then I choose whether I accept or I decline. Mm. So, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> mechanic when they choose person. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Maybe speak pigeon today. God damn it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I'm working on mm-hmm. more or less like an app that's going to make it seamless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And instead of having the interview process, these are things that people can just look at and choose by themselves. Yeah. So... 
stay tuned. Madas has something big coming in the next couple of months. Thank you so much for coming. This was so good. My pleasure. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes.